disputes uh, one to watch. Let's though bring in, of course, a special guest for you this show. Simon Hetty is from Herbert Smith Freehills. He's in our Melbourne studio and a happy new year to you, welcoming you to the show and some thoughts, I suppose, about just the way markets have begun 2016 and uh, a sentiment play on that from a legal eagle perspective. How do you judge uh, you know, the, the climate for, for deals to occur when it's like this? It's a, it's a very interesting question and, and good morning Carson. Um, I guess there's certainly we've seen a degree of uncertainty in the early parts of the markets this year. That can, and, and with all the headwinds in terms of the oil price and, and where equity markets are going, that can lead to a couple of different things. Maybe it's going to lead to some opportunistic buying. Maybe it's going to lead to people taking their foot off the accelerator for a while and holding back on some of the deals. It's hard to say that there will necessarily be one trend or another. It's certainly in people's mind, but uh, certainly uncertainty is the, uh, the flavour of the day. And in that type of environment, you know, you've seen big moves in currencies as well, and, and particularly a, a downdraft on the Australian dollar, which would be a signal and, and potentially that now is perhaps, relatively speaking, more of a, a strategically good time to move than, than mm. waiting, uh, particularly as even Fed expectations alter. What's, do you see a window of opportunity here? I think we do. I think we see a bit of a window, particularly for foreign buyers. Of course, currency is not going to help a, a deal that fundamentally doesn't stack up, but certainly uh, it, it increases the, uh, the propensity for foreign bidders to play. And, you know, we've got in Australia a very stable regime uh, where, where the rules are well known. We've had some recent changes to do with, with FERB and, and some updating there, some increases of some of the thresholds. And in general, that's going to aid to clarity and, and help people along. The one, the one group that it may uh, m give them some pause and make them think about their strategy a bit more is probably foreign government buyers, the sorts of people who uh, have, may have particular issues or there may be political concerns around uh, security or, or Australia's tax base and things. And we've seen that in some of the recent press around the, uh, the potential Port of Melbourne sale, and we certainly saw it last year in some of those deals. Mm -hmm. So probably a positive environment for foreign investment and a stable, good environment, but, uh, but certainly some people thinking carefully about how they manage uh, the regulatory side of things. Uh, Simon, morning to you. Where, where do you see uh, private equity fitting in that scenario? Well, I think uh, some boards are still struggling to see exactly how they deal with private equity. Um, you know, it's not necessarily the big scary monster in the corner, and uh, you know they, they have a right to participate in transactions just like everyone else. Where it does play into things, I think, is that we're, we are seeing less hostile deals at the moment. Bidders, whether they're whether they're corporates or, or private equity, are generally wanting to do friendlier deals, have a high degree of certainty, have support from targets. Of course, there's a few exceptions, things like the Sedgman deal. You've mentioned already. But in general, um, we're seeing an environment where people want to do friendly deals with board support and, and that is something that is very important to private equity. So in some ways they should be more cheek to jowl uh, with other bidders. They, they shouldn't fun, uh, be suffering too much in terms of uh, lack of availability of debt and equity capital. So uh, potentially uh, a strong period. You mentioned, um, looking ahead, you mentioned FERB as well earlier. What's, um, how do you see the regulatory framework, in particular the ACCC and, and FERB, um, you know, potential changes over the year, um, mooted changes, and perhaps even where some changes, you, in your view, um, you know, should be implemented? Yeah, well, I think the on the FERB side of things, we've had our, our big wave of reform and people are digesting that. We've had the first situations recently where people are now having to pay their, their application fees to get FERB to even look at their application. But in general, we've, we've got more clarity and in some instances, higher thresholds before people need to go to FERB. If we look, for example, uh, on the other side of things at the competition analysis, again, we've got a pretty stable regime where people know the boundaries. We've got a, um, a chairman in Rod Sims who's been there a while. Certainly, uh, um, while people would generally know where they stand and, and we do have some concentrated markets, one area uh, potentially of concern which may flow into some of the privatisations and other state government dealings has been uh, some of the concerns mooted by, by uh, Rod and, and others around perhaps elements of those deals which might be designed or perceived to be designed to maximise the upfront sale proceeds but which aren't necessarily uh, in the best interests of, of the state longer term. And for example the, 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 the controversy over the Port of Melbourne compensation mechanism if a second port is built uh, during the life of that privatisation and, and Rod's uh, uh, concerns about that is, is one example of that. Simon, there are many, many moving parts uh, to, to be across in this ongoing story. So thank you for illuminating some of the detail. Appreciate it.
Thank you. Talk to you soon. Simon Hattie there from the law firm uh, Herbert Smith Freehills. And to you, Simon Siegel, thanking you as always. Looking forward to your company next week. And we'll see you same time then.